In the ancient world, philosophers were warriors. Marcus Aurelius hunts. There's an early Stoic who's a distance runner, one who's a boxer. Those things are difficult, and difficult things are good for you. It's impossible to achieve anything without self-discipline. And also, there's nothing you can find that's not improved by self-discipline. Discipline is this thing that it makes us great, and then it makes whatever we do great. And that's why this virtue of temperance Self-discipline, self-control, self-mastery was so critical to the Stoics. Seneca said, no one is fit to rule who has not first mastered themselves. I'm Ryan Holiday. I'm the author of a number of books about Stoic philosophy, including this new one, Discipline is Destiny, the second in my series of the Cardinal Virtues. And in today's episode, I want to talk about that self-discipline, the most important force in the world, the force you have to figure out to be great, to do great things, for some people, they, they lack discipline. This is why they can't get up off the couch. This is why they shove food in their mouth that they shouldn't do. This is why they don't do the hard work on themselves or whatever's in front of them. But then there's other people who have the exact opposite problem. They're too driven. They can't relax. They can't let up, which is why at the Oracle of Delphi, the famous piece of advice was moderation in all things. It's not good to have no discipline, to have no motivation and no drive. But conversely, it's not any better to have too much of these things. In the end, you wreck yourself. Ozymandias, look at my works and despair, right? You hurt other people and you don't fully realize the gifts that you have. So when we say that discipline is destiny, it's not any amount of discipline, it's the right amount of discipline that makes you who you are. One of the things I think a lot about and that I dislike, if I was like, describe a philosopher, it'd be like university professor, turtleneck, like yeah. tweed. You'd think of a weakling. And in the ancient world, like philosophers were people who did shit. They were warriors, they were kings, like Marcus Aurelius hunts. There's an early Stoic who's a distance runner, one who's a boxer. And what I love when you really read the Stoic text is like their metaphors are all sport. It's wrestling and fighting yeah. and running and hunting because they did those things. Those things are difficult. Yeah. Yes. And difficult things are good for you, and they're good for your mind. Seneca says, we treat the body rigorously so that it will not be disobedient to the mind. Ooh. I like that. That's good. And I think about that when I'm jumping in the shower, jumping in a cold pool, whether I'm pushing myself while I'm running or lifting weights, is like, I'm reminding the body who's in charge. That's what the physical practice is. It's the mind asserting itself over the body. We tend to think of philosophers as these sort of soft people, but actually the, the mental practice, the mental resilience, being in charge of yourself is the ultimate muscle that you want to cultivate. And it's the thing that every great athlete has to have. It's good that you have really high standards, but you have to understand it's called self discipline for a reason, meaning it's about you. You don't get to enforce that on other people. This is why Marcus Aurelius talks about being strict with yourself, tolerant with others. Cato says, I can forgive anyone's errors but my own, meaning you leave other people to their own mistakes, you're tolerant, you're forgiving, you understand all the context which just goes into it, and that's why you're not hard on them, but yourself, that's who you don't accept excuses to, that's who you hold to increasingly high standards, because that's the only thing you control. You control self-discipline, where you're gonna go crazy, where you're gonna become an asshole, is if you try to enforce those standards, that self-discipline on the other people around you, who, by the way, never asked you to do that, they never signed up for it, and maybe they don't even agree with your standards, even if they could reach them. But the point is, really high standards for yourself, tolerant, forgiving, understanding, helpful to everyone else. That's what stoicism is. Joy or happiness or, or, or delight, that's not an emotion we associate with the Stoics. But the Stoics experience that. Epictetus says, me, I delight in my own improvement day to day. His delight wasn't coming uh, from money or fame or recognition or pleasure. It was from getting better every day. It was from improving. It wasn't based on externals, as the Stoics warn us against. It was based on the inner work he could do on himself. It was knowing that he was becoming a little bit better, a little bit wiser, a little bit more self-controlled, self-contained, a little more resilient. That's where the Stoic finds joy and happiness and pleasure. So I'm doing the, the four virtue series, so I just encourage, and then 
the new book is about temperance, which seems like the most boring thing you can think of. But actually, I render it as self-discipline. Weirdly, the most critical of all the issues. Like, how do you moderate courage? How do you find the right amount of the thing you're doing? Like, especially if you're like ambitious or driven or talented or successful. Like, how do you know what enough is? When you hear about like Kobe and Michael, you're just like, I want to go all out, but that, yeah. that's really hard to compare yourself Well, there's a Seneca quote that says, poverty isn't having too little, it's wanting more. So like, how do you get to a place where you don't want more? Like, where, but you're doing the thing from a place of fullness and emptiness. Right now we have a bunch of awesome pre-order bonuses you can check out at dailystoic.com slash pre-order. I hope you like this video, I hope you subscribe, but what I really want you to subscribe to is our Daily Stoic email, one bit of Stoic wisdom, totally for free to the largest community of Stoics ever in existence. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash email. There's no spam, you can unsubscribe at any time. I love sending it, I've sent it every day for the last six years, and I hope to see you there at dailystoic.com slash email.